Okay, thank you very much, Professor Androni. Uh, so, um, as you said, uh, uh, this is a co-author paper together with my uh, colleagues from uh, the Zielina University from uh, Slovakia, Tomasz Krzysztof, Katarina Valaszkova, and uh, Maria Kovacova. Uh, this uh, uh, paper uh, plan to empirically examine big data-driven decision-making processes uh, and um, uh, is related to uh, the Internet of uh, Manufacturing Things. Uh, we uh, performed an analysis and made estimates regarding uh, data-driven interconnection of network machines in smart, smart manufacturing systems by using um, and replicating data collected from uh, Capgemini Management Events, McKinsey, and uh, PwC. Um, there are some uh, main ideas uh, our paper cover. First of all, network machines are deployed to perform manufacturing operations. The interoperability between networks Work machines may be articulated dynamically to boost adjustability to customized tasks. The data-driven interconnection of network machines enhances the performance of sensor-based production systems. And uh, some sort of uh, cumulative idea uh, underpinning uh, the entire research, uh, sensing data can be harnessed from large-scale Internet of Manufacturing Things network machines to advance cutting edge tools for diagnostics, prognostics, and upgrading of a smart manufacturing system through machine information processing, adaptive equipment control, real time data acquisition, network modeling, predictive maintenance systems, and condition monitoring. We um, uh, had our uh, uh, research section in uh, uh, different segments. So one of uh, uh, them is uh, uh, methodology and empirical analysis. We um, um, uh, found out that articulating cyber physical uh, production systems, Internet of Manufacturing Things data includes significant information to be extracted and processed from interconnected machines. Um, descriptive statistics of cumulative data from the completed surveys were determined when, when appropriate. Um, another section is the study design, survey methods and materials. Uh, the interviews were carried out, out online and data were weighted by uh, five variables, age, race, ethnicity, gender, education, and geography region, employing the Census Bureau's American Community Survey to indicate precisely the demographic composition of the United States. The sample weighting was performed deploying an iterative proportional fitting operation that even up the distributions of all variables in concert. This data was populated and inspected in SPSS to confirm the inference and randomizations were functioning as planned before starting the survey. Behavioral data sets have been gathered, integrated in the spreadsheet and crowd brain computational techniques and empirical approaches have been leveraged for analysis. Um, another section is that uh, referring to statistical analysis. Um, uh, this survey uses statistical weighting methods to explain deviations in the survey sample from identifiable population characteristics being uh, pivotal in adjusting differential survey involvement and random deviation in samples. Uh, the first table uh, covers um, the way artificial intelligence has become instrumental to business growth and uh, process uh, improvements. Um, our uh, tables uh, cover uh, the relevance of each um, 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 subsection of uh, the tables and uh, thus uh, uh, there are uh, several ideas we focused on. The first one uh, I mentioned, the second one is organizations focus on manufacturing intelligence. Uh, the third one, automation transformations uh, uh, can produce significant business impact and provide the strategic advantage. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth one, main um, driver is triggering investment in uh, robotics and automation solutions. Uh, the fifth one, applying automation and robotics to increase cost efficiency and enable accuracy. 
the six one companies are investing in that analytics to analyze massive raw data sets and extract actionable insights for faster and better business decision making. There are some uh, conclusions, implications, limitations, and uh, further research directions. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, virtual machine networks same large scale manufacturing optimization and management. Advanced sensing transfers relevant data streams across internet of manufacturing and things that connects equipment in the cyber physical systems and produces big data leveraging heterogeneous sensor to incessantly supervise machine conditions. Enhancing the administration and planning of production operations. Advanced sensor technologies intensify the data perceptibility and system compatibility throughout shop floors. And the last uh, idea we uh, uh, focused on and can be approached uh, further for some sort of uh, uh, another direction uh, stream is that internet of manufacturing thinks that cloud computing can configure virtual machine networks, optimizing production decision making performance by use of the cyber physical integration of uh, shop floors. Uh, that was uh, our uh, paper. Okay. Uh, if there are any questions, I can tell uh, some words uh, about me uh, before the questions. Um, I uh, teach... Uh, um, uh, courses and uh, seminars in uh, the area of uh, uh, the economics of uh, your behavior. And uh, I have uh, published 84 um, uh, papers index in the web of science. I was for five years um, a senior research fellow at the University of Waikato, New Zealand. Uh, I have been included uh, um, in uh, 2020 and 2019 in the Stanford University top of the most cited uh, scientists in the world. And uh, that's about all. Thank you very much again for uh, watching my presentation. So we thank you also. Uh, if there are any questions from the audience, uh, please uh, you can ask uh, Professor Lazaroyo. So, I understand there aren't. Uh, okay. Uh, we will uh, uh, follow our program. So, the next uh, paper is titled Cryptocurrencies as an uh, Accelerator of Sustainable Development. Uh, if there are present, it's still uh, a little early according to the program. It was uh, scheduled for 10.15. But if the authors are online uh, and we can start, I don't know if uh, they agree to uh, start a few minutes earlier. The authors of the paper are Hanna Stefanovic, Bojan Kosic and Nikola Popovic. The paper is titled Cryptocurrencies as an Accelerator of Sustainable Development. I don't know if they are hearing us. I see that uh, uh, Mrs. Hanna Stefanovic is connected, but I don't know if she uh, is hearing us. I see that Hannah is present, but I'm not sure yes, that yes. she will present the paper. I will call her I, now. I, I, I'm, I not sure her we, I'm not sure if the persons that are... I, this is the reason I uh, read all the authors, because I don't know uh, which one is the uh, presenter. I so, understand. I so, will call them so, now. Uh, Give me just a few minutes. Okay, okay, we can wait. Uh, we, we are ahead of time, so it's not, uh, this is I'm not sorry. a problem. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm Hannah Stefanovic, but uh, 
<coughs> I'm I'm not able to speak because I'm sick. <coughs> Sorry. I'm very, I'm very ill. I, I cannot speak. And <coughs> my colleague Boyan will present a paper. Maybe he's not present now. I will call him. I'm very sorry. I okay, no, no problem. It's no problem. We are sorry for your situation. Okay, hope, thank you. We hope you will be well as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. So we still uh, we can still wait a few minutes, or uh, if you want to uh, go ahead, if if it's someone else uh, is able to and willing to present, I don't know. Until uh, Boyan will uh, connect. We can do this also if uh, someone uh, wants to present earlier. Or we shall wait for Boyan to connect. It's uh, your uh, decision. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, we can wait for Brian, but if he is not appearing any soon, I have uh, also paper to present. So uh, then I can present if he's. Uh, yes, it's not problem. If uh, we, we can wait for a little for late. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we are ahead of time, so uh, we for from my point of view, uh, there is not a problem if uh, you are ready to present a little earlier. Uh, okay. So which paper are you presenting? Yeah. I am presenting the paper. I am presenting the paper penetration testing for uh, VPA and VPA2 security protocols and analysis uh, of security penetration issues. Okay, it, it was from uh, eleven thirty. Yes. Uh, okay, we. I think we can start. If you okay. agree, it's fine for us. Uh, it's, it's it's okay. Well, it's it's uh, interesting paper. Let, uh, I think that most of us are now connected to the Wi-Fi. So the question is how security we are on that connection. So this paper was about that. And we usually think that we are always security when we are on our computers and when we are on internet. Uh, never mind, are we using our homes, home network, uh, not network at, at our enterprise, or are we using a public Wi-Fi network? So this uh, paper is about security in using Wi-Fi networks. Now I will present the whole screen, share. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Uh, in one moment, yes, we can see it, yes. If you can make it a little larger, uh, yes. that's, that's ex excellent. Thank you very much. So. Uh, the, the paper will discuss the security protocols of virus computer networks. Uh, the first is first uh, security network for wireless network was uh, uh, the, 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 something that we call VEP. That is uh, wired extreme uh, pro, uh, pro, that is a protocol that uh, aimed to, that, to make a wireless connection almost equals security as the wired connection. Then there is Wi-Fi uh, uh, wi security protocols that has VPA and VP2 encryption and that are successors of the VP, VEP protocol. And the reasons for the existence of such protocols and how they are applied will be explained in this, in this paper. The security. Uh, protocols will be tested with practical exams and penetration testings in a security in insecure environment using Argeddon and Pixel Web tools. The operating system to be used is Parrot OS. And now, the in the introduction, I just want to say that inter is, internet is being used in everyday businesses, and in addition to wired networks. Quick adoption uh, has been uh, seen with the wireless networks to the internet. So uh, even now, a lot of us is using wireless networks, and almost every day, we a lot a lot of times uh, uh, we use wireless networks for our mobile device, uh, laptops, uh, tablets, and 
etc. So since the internet is being used in every form of e-business and increasingly wirelessly, wirelessly, uh, the data must be securely transmitted to preserve it, its integrity. So especially when we are using e-banking uh, tools, when we are using our uh, ERP systems, where we are using management information systems, and we are using our laptops or, or, or other device wirelessly, we need to uh, be aware of the threats and be aware of the security protocols that we need to use. So um, uh, various types of attacks on wireless computers networks are happening every day all over the world. So in this paper, security protocols, we show that security pro protocols have evolved, but not all users can keep up with the latest trends. And most of users don't, do not think much about security until the data is compromised. So the, the problem is that we usually think that we are safe until we are not. So, and then it's too late to think about safety. So the question now when we are just presenting this is, how often are you changing your passwords? How often are you think about uh, where you live, where are you leaving your pin codes and, and uh, data that are highly valuable? So this uh, paper is, uh, but we, we write about uh, Wi-Fi wi protected, protected access protocols and how are they trying to protect us if we are not protecting ourselves very well. So, so from a very creation of WP, WPA protocols, and the WPA2 uh, was be, being developed, which was much more complex and secure. And new security infrastructure was uh, being tested, which was the latest standard in the field of security of wireless computer networks, and brought many changes in function and authentication of user with access points and changes in data encryption. So uh, the WPA was the first standard. and. Nearly after that, the WPA2 was, was developed. Why? Because there was a hole in security systems that need to be replaced, that need to be uh, made better. So uh, WPA standard become available in 2003rd year. And then until that, it's developing. And it's uh, developing as a protocol to <clears throat> implement uh, most uh, IEE uh, 802 standards, and that's uh, because the in the in the in the wireless network connection we have a lot of gaps, a lot of uh, holes that can be used by the attacker in the network. So shortly after the WPA uh, was presented, a uh, couple of years later, it was with WPA. To present it in, and it was uh, in 2006. It becomes necessary for device to carry the original Wi-Fi tag. So wherever you see the Wi-Fi tag on the, uh, any device, it's using WPA2 uh, protocol. So it's very important that we are aware of that. And until the uh, 2018, the system was only set of secure measures of wireless computer networks that have proven to be a good reliable mechanism for security. But, but there are, they are two very significant weaknesses in WPA and WPA2 systems that uh, could compromise the security of wireless networks. Moreover, a new methods, methods are emerging every day by which hackers try to compromise their, their security of our systems. So uh, even now, the WPA standard need to be improved. So with what is the mostly one of the problem, for example, is the, the problem is with dictionary attack methods. So if we are using some, how to say, a common word, a word that is near to us, uh, our first name, our last name, our friend's name, our pet, pet name, or something, our dates of the birth or something like that, it's very, uh, it's high variety that it's part of some exist, existing dictionary 
and that with a good computer, it can be uh, our password can be can be uh, broken. So it's very important that uh, in all these weaknesses, we are implementing the procedure to uh, that with which with that procedures our connection can be much better, can be much safer. So uh, what is solution to all these security issues? And in the paper, we presented all this with the examples, with the very examples from the real life that can be uh, processed in the hackers' attacks. So a specific so solution to protect the wireless network from a previously described and performant attacks is to set a strong password. So we talk about a strong password. We mean a password that contains a capital letter, a signs, a letters and numbers in a combination. So first thing is strong letter, a strong password, and then it's quickly, not quickly, but in the periods that password need to be changed. So uh, this addition to we, uh, the aim of paper is to show that the new protocols have a, Whole insecure, holes in security, and if we adapt our uh, procedures very well, then we can fill up those holes, holes in, in the gaps in the security, and we can make our connection uh, always to be uh, secure. So there is also WPA3 uh, as a future of network protection. It's the latest security protocol that appears in January 2018, and the Wi-Fi Alliance identified it as an official deputy for WPA2. It's not just globally applicable, but in some manufacturers have already started making routers with this type of encryption. So uh, as much as we try to uh, be ahead of the hackers, they are always following the new trends and they are always finding they are always finding uh, gaps or uh, holes in our security systems to uh, make some harm to, to, our, to our system or our connection. So uh, VPA is um, a new, a new uh, standard, that, a new protocol that will uh, set uh, the level of protection on a higher level. So we think that all the manufacturers of the equipment, of the laptops, of the any devices that are on the networks, or also of the um, routers need to apply this standard to, to set our security on a high level. So it's like this new standard, like the previous have two models, uh, the personal and enterprise model. So however, personal use uh, a little uh, shorter, uh, Hashes and the professional professional model model have a stronger data encryption system. So every enterprise should uh, have device with the, in the future with the WPA3 standard on the professional model. So that's this the uh, in this in this case the com uh, communication we have with our app system, our management information system, or a banking. Uh, application would be only then and uh, with our procedures that we are following always uh, the security protocols then only in that case we will have security connection through our uh, Wi-Fi to, to our device that are connected to the Wi-Fi so there are also some new problems in the latest technology uh, as WPA3 technology emerged very soon after the successfully demonstrated attack, it uh, was noticeable that it came on other market rapidly. So, uh, however, we are developing devices that are protecting the networks. The hackers are using all that devices very quickly to adapt to find the gaps. So there is always uh, gaps and the holes in that, that security systems. And that's why we need to have our own procedures in our own enterprise. So. The biggest threat under the WPA3 protocol is an attack called Dragon Blood, and this is uh, it can uh, this threat can cause downsiding attacks, side channel attacks, brute force password, uh, and DOS access point attacks. So this also if we are talking about WPA3 as a future future of security, and even now the hackers have find 
the way to attack those advice. So it has uh, its own problems, but we hope that through, through the time we will have a new standard, maybe this uh, standard WPA improved to protect us while we are using our device on the Wi-Fi network. So the future of the wireless computer network networks will face major challenge changes. As have been the case before, wireless uh, frequencies must achieve a higher level of reliability to make average use on e-commerce and e-commerce safer. In addition, the rapid development of information technology has also led to rapid development of in wireless computer network security. But also, we didn't mention here, written um, in the Internet of Things, in the world of Internet of Things, uh, we are all, we all have a lot of, how to say, a lot of uh, devices that we are connected to. And in, in, in that case, all of that devices are usually on the wireless network and all that devices need to be protected. So uh, we have very rarely uh, improvements in security protocols and the hackers are moving much faster. So if we are talking about uh, uh, 4.0 uh, industrial revolution, if we are talking about internet of things, if we are talking about self-driving cars, there's a lot of problems and there will be, and the uh, 5G technology of fast Wi-Fi internet, there will be a lot of demand for the security in the network connection. So we think that these new standards are improvement if we are looking at the old ones, but also that even now standards that are applied and protocols that are applied need to be much more improved if we want to be secure on our networks, especially if we are using uh, private uh, uh, public Wi-Fi networks, and that is the case almost every every day that we are out our company in the coffee shops, in the malls, in the other places where other peoples are also connected to the network, the people we don't know, and the devices we don't recognize. So uh, in the paper, we try to show uh, what, what are the gaps, what are the holes in the security systems with the now installed protocol, and what are the needs, and in which ways uh, should be uh, improvement, uh, should be, uh, what need to be improved in the now applied uh, protocols. So uh, a normal user of Wi-Fi network, a normal user of device that is connected to Wi-Fi network think he is always secure. And uh, when you look as it on it as professional, you need to see that it's not secure, especially if he's not following all the procedure that need to keep him secure while he, while he using the wireless network. So that was, in short, that, that we were uh, working on in our paper. Thank you very much. If there are questions, I'm here. Thank and, you. Okay. You know, I just, I just say that, that is, there is any questions, I'm here. So, so we have a questions, uh, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Plozovic, for your uh, presentation. Uh, my question is whether you think that um, blockchain technologies, or better, how you think uh, uh, blockchain technologies might be instrumental in um, um, maintaining security or optimizing security for um, uh, self-driving cars? Yeah, uh, well, uh, the blockchain is, uh, as far as I know, uh, the technology to keep information that already happened. And in this, in this, in this situation, if we have a fast Wi-Fi as a 5G, if we have a fast processor that can uh, keep information about what's happening around us, then the, the blockchain will uh, remember the position of all cars nearby and that's and all objects in nearby. Uh, so that will uh, be something like uh, uh, in real time, uh, uh, in real time uh, 
uh, data saving of all objects that are in on the road now. So it's it it will be very very important if something wrong wrongs happen, but I don't think that ca it can improve the management of the how it's it's driven in the real time. I don't think so. But it it will it can. Uh, save all the data about all the objects that are on the on the road but i don't think that can improve management or drive driving capability of the self-driving car at the moment that's my opinion it doesn't have to be in that way but that's my opinion thank you very much thank you for your question thank you also so uh... Uh, if there are other questions from the audience, uh, if not, uh, we can uh, go to the next paper. I don't know if uh, uh, Mr. Boyan Kosic uh, connected. If he did, he still did is not connected. We can uh, go to the following papers. I don't know if uh, the paper titled Smart House Web Application Design and Implementation Using Java EE, MVC Framework, and uh, Arduino uh, Microcontroller. Is uh, someone able to present this paper? Yes, I'm here. Okay, hello. Sorry for, I'm not available. Uh, I'm unable to turn on my camera because I don't have it. I'm on desktop PC, so sorry. No problem. If you are able to present now, I know it's a little earlier. Yes, it's okay to me. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, yes, it appeared. Okay. My name is Trahin Georgievic, and I'm from ITS school from Belgrade. I graduated uh, two months ago, so I, this was my final exam uh, project. So I will present it now, if it is okay. The short history about uh, smart home and helping people is that idea of creating an intelligent home system appeared in the beginning of 10th century at the same time as electrification and the appearance on the, of the first model, so how household appliances as vacuum cleaners, washing machine, irons, etc. Uh, so the first control device for smart home were developed and implemented in 50s and 60s, 60s of the last century. For example, the Echo Fort is, was a kitchen computer. Uh, the first smart device that calculated shopping lists, controlled the temperature in the home and turned the device on and off. Today, smart homes are more about safety and environmental uh, life. Smart homes are, are some sustainable. Further development of smart homes goes to direction of developing technologies that will learn about user habits. The main functions uh, of smart homes are maintaining maximum user comfort, uh, in everyday life, like monitoring living space characteristics such as microclimate and lighting, as well as automating household chores uh, such as washing, cooking, cleaning. Uh, and the next function is avoiding secu security incidents like burglary, uncontrolled gas leaks, etc. Uh, efficient and economical use of electricity and water. Smart homes can uh, improve energy saving thermal comfort, health, and safety. Programmed applications achieve control of this system. Uh, for example, if the room is empty, okay, reduce the heating to minimum and turn off the light. So the main components of smart homes are uh, three groups of components. So controller controls the system in automatic mode and according to user settings, the system configuration allows one or more devices there are sensors monitor the state uh, that that monitors the state of envi environment in residential space temperature humidity move, movement movement of people uh, the sensors send the appropriate signals to the controller 
which protects them and issues commands in order to adjust the parameters according to user's order. Executive device perform a specific jobs or action uh, when, when they receive an order from the controller. This includes uh, air conditioner, ventilation, socket switches, and so on. Use technology for this project is uh, Java, Enterprise, Java Enterprise Edition, the Java platform for development of enterprise application. Java uh, can be divided into three parts that follows the appropriate technology, and the, uh, that uh, are servlets. Servlets are a popular way of building interactive web application. It's server-side component that runs ex exclusively with uh, within a Java virtual machine. Servlets provide a sophisticated way to create a server-side following standard Java Enterprise Edition environment and using a highly port portable Java Java sorry Java programming language. The role of servlet consists of uh, receiving and reading, reading detailed data sent by client, for example, data from the form, web form, uh, receiving uh, and reading implicit data sent by client as header requests, generating results and sending detailed data to the client, and send implicit data to the client like status codes about the header response. The next uh, in component in Java uh, Enterprise Edition are Java Beans, uh, that uh, they are Java uh, Enterprise Edition components that implement uh, Enterprise Java Beans technology. They are written in the Java programming language and represent components that uh, run on the server side and which, as rule, encapsulate the business logic of the, of the application. The using enterprise being significantly simplifies the development of complex distributed applications and enables the creation of software components that can be reused uh, when we uh, when we want to develop new application. And the JSP is a Java server page. It's a Java technology for generating dynamic web content. Uh, and MVC uses this technology uh, as default for generating view. So the next MVC, uh, MVC model is a model of architecture of consists of three components, model, view, and controller. Uh, model is component that, that contains a structure of business system and its operations. That is, um, it contains data and data processing operation. Uh, the view component provides a user interface through which the user communicates with the system. It also sends the user reports obtained from a model. Uh, and the controller is component that is responsible for managing the uh, execution of system operation. It accepts all requests from the client, client then uh, calls the operation defined uh, in the module and controls its ex execution. So if we make a parallel uh, the, MV, between MVC and the uh, Java Enterprise Edition components, the servlets uh, would be the con controllers, Java Beans would be models, and JSP, uh, so Java servlet page, uh, will be uh, the view component. And the next uh, technology is Arduino. Arduino is open source development system in an electronic computer platform created in uh, tw uh, 2020 uh, year at Ivory University in Italy. Uh, the Arduino system is used to manage other systems and modules. Arduino programming is done in a programming language based on wiring language. It, in sense, it is a C++ programming language with many facilitations and predefined functions uh, for end users or developers. This programming uh, uh, program writing for the Arduino is called a sketch. The use cases of this project um, uh, for two roles. There are two roles, user and admin. User 
can control light, RGB lighting control, irrigation, blind control, temperature and humidity review, temperature and humidity entry in statistics, if user want to record uh, how, for example, his uh, room is uh, warm, and deletion of statistics, and role admin can add users, deleting users, updating user accounts, such as changing their access to some device, and the uh, admin can read uh, logs because every action of user creates some login system. So admin can uh, can follow the what's happening in system, and admin can delete log. The conclusion uh, uh, that this project and the smart home uh, will, will uh, make. Is it, is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Uh, like to make life as easy and comfortable as possible. Uh, so the appearance of the smart home system was a consequence of the desire of people to make their life as easy and comfortable as possible. So 10 years ago, smart homes look, looked like an expensive futuristic fraud project or science fiction idea. And after that, the privilege of, of execute exec, exclusively rich people. Today, smart home systems are, are available to the majority of the population due to, due to reducing IT technologies cost. This web application makes the most significant contribut contribution to users with difficulty or disability, allowing them to control the device from mobile phone or computer also, for users who lead a modern lifestyle, for uh, example, fast uh, lifestyle, automation and remote control uh, of the devices offered by this system can elevate uh, or at least reduce stress and care at home. Some of the ideas for uh, fut uh, further research and improvement of web application, smart house, uh, which appeared during this implementation are uh, the control of cooling and heating device, fixing uh, the security of the house by adding an alarm system and sending notification via email service if then alarm is activated, as well as adding a video surveillance uh, section. So if there is a question, I am here to answer. Thank you. Okay, we have two questions. Uh, Mr. Lazaroyu George, please. Uh, thank you very much, Professor uh, Georgievich, for your uh, excellent presentation. My question is whether you think that um, uh, smart home technologies might lead to an increase in uh, remote work? Yes. Uh, uh, you mean in remote work when uh, we are home and uh, we need, for example, to make a coffee while we on meet? Yes, it, 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 uh, it can increase and redu reduce our stress levels because I don't uh, need to move from my laptop to make me a coffee or something. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, there is some um, extra debate that might lead to, to this uh, issue. In fact, what, what do you think? Uh, perhaps some uh, uh, employees uh, might be more interested in um, um, uh, cutting off their current job or their, their, to uh, drop their current job uh, that uh, uh, involves uh, uh, physical presence and uh, look out for a job involving remote work. Uh, sorry, I think that I uh, don't understand your question. Can you repeat? Yes. <clears throat> uh, my question is whether you think that, uh, in fact, smart home technologies might lead to some sort of uh, a grand demise as it happens nowadays in the United States 
when uh, people enjoy the comfort, are enjoying the comfort of their own homes are, and are less interested in jobs involving physical presence and look out for jobs um, involving remote work only because uh, it is so comfortable to, to use so smart home technologies, so many smart home technologies, but not only, including, let's say, um, um, autonomous vehicle delivery or drone delivery and, or, and some other services, let's say Netflix and others, Disney. I'm really sorry, but I, I, I don't get the point. I, I can't understand your question. So if uh, some of uh, maybe Milena, if you understood, you can explain me the question so I can answer. Uh, sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, I was trying to coordinate with other authors. Uh, can you please, uh, Professor George, repeat the question? Sorry, I, I wasn't. Sorry. Uh, in my basic question is that nowadays in the united states um uh, there is a talk about the grand demise in terms of uh, a lot of uh, people uh, seem to be less interested in um, jobs involving physical presence and uh, taking into account uh, the technologies associated with uh, a smart home uh, they seem more and more interested in taking up remote work. Yes, I'm sure that you are right. Uh, I recently conducted a research regarding the work from home uh, during the uh, COVID pandemic situation, and I came up to the same conclusion uh, because all of the uh, possibilities that um, our smart homes or uh, any, any use of... Um, information communication systems allow us to, to, to have while we are at home, uh, makes us more comfortable uh, while we are working at home and don't have a, a need to, uh, to go to the work or uh, spend uh, many hours uh, uh, commuting to, to the, uh, or going to the office. So I think that uh, this is a good point. Uh, Strachnia professor is asking if um, uh, these possibilities of um, uh, smart homes and um, communication that uh, um, appliances allow us to, 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 to have with uh, our colleagues uh, uh, will um, uh, bring us to the situation that we uh, would like to stay at home and work and uh, won't have a need to go uh, somewhere else to our remote offices. Oh, yes, I, I understand now. Uh, sorry for misunderstanding. No problem. But, uh, yes, the, but uh, maybe it's not good for people. They need to recreate, get outside, got the coffee with friends and something. And uh, that shouldn't be uh, online, on meetings. So, but uh, my idea when I created this project for first was uh, to to make the life easier for people who can't uh, sadly uh, get up from bed. Maybe they need uh, lights for uh, reading, and they can turn on them by uh, from their phone. So. But yes, and maybe if people uh, were in office, they can uh, start their uh, heater, for example, to come to one home. But uh, not the my idea was not to keep people uh, to keep uh, people in uh, in home. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we also had a question from um, Mr. Plojovic. Please, if it's still... Yes, uh... yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Really interesting subject. Uh, uh, now, when we are talking about cybersecurity, we usually think about bank accounts, about our data, and about uh, the digital property. But now, with the Internet of Things, a lot of changed because maybe someone will turn on heater 
maybe hacker will turn on heater in your home so it will overheat and maybe have problems because of that so do you think that we in the future will have to professor asked me first then about uh, blockchain in 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 the smart vehicles also there is a uh, security issues in the smart smart vehicles about they're in, uh, always connected through the internet so this is also uh, an issue so do you think that in the future we will have a big issue in cyber in in, in cyber security but connected with smart devices not only with our data our bank accounts uh, yes, yes. Th this is the no, no. The future. This is a now uh, pro uh, problem because uh, smart devices uh, are not security uh, and secure, and uh, uh, we have problem. But my project is because because I li like ethical hacking. <laughs> yes, and pen testing. So my project is based on uh, the devices communicates uh, in uh, with uh, JSON API. So I tried to build in security as generating specific uh, uh, tokens uh, and short algorithm that I used from GitHub or somewhere that generate the the security tokens uh, for each message between device they they need to to be equal so uh, that my way of uh, of be building the security of smart devices and uh, as uh, you mentioned blockchain i am too interested in that technology so i'm building my blockchain in uh, python so I, I i will try to make smart homes on blockchain because we don't need uh, fast hashing algorithms for uh, as for driving so we for driving we need to 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 make hashing algorithms in part of milliseconds or or mi microseconds i don't know because uh, and but for smart home it could be one or two seconds hashing algorithm so uh i i'm working on it and thank you for your question Thank you very much for your answer. And the first, the first question I write this here it was, uh, why not Python? Why Java? So thank you very much. Uh, you already answered it. So uh, thank you very much for no, it's okay. Thank you very much for your really, really good presentation and uh, really good issues. And a lot of devices now are based on the Wi-Fi, and you base this on the web as web application. So it's uh, it's also. Uh, uh, by my opinion, a good way to treat the home home devices. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you all, uh, thank you. all of you. Uh, if there are not uh, any other questions, uh, we can go forward to the next paper. I don't know if uh, the paper title Possibilities for Developing and Implementing a Mobile Application for Recognizing the Shape of the Environment Text and Reading QR Codes Using Android Cameras Framework and the Machine Learning Kit. Uh, if is anyone, uh, uh, any author from this, uh, of this paper to present? Hello, I'm here. Okay. I will now present it just a moment to share the screen mm, like this uh, can you all see my share yes, yes it's it's fine thank you okay so again hello everyone thank you for having me my name is Milan Pelesh and I'm going to be speaking to you today about possibilities for developing and implementing a mobile application for recognizing the shape of the environment, text and reading QR codes using the Android Camera X framework and the machine learning kit. Uh, to fully describe the technology that will be used in this project, I must introduce the concept of machine learning, ML kit and Camera X software. So in the beginning, I will cover mm -hmm. briefly the theory of the Android operating system and the description of the functionalities and libraries used in this project. Uh, so let's start. Um, Android. Android is an open source operating system based on Linux kernel. 
it's, it is intended for various devices ranging from mobile phones, where it is most relevant, to smartwatch, fitness device, home applications, and televisions. The languages that are used for developing Android applications are C or C++ for native application, HTML5, and Java with XML and Kotlin with XML as the most common languages. I presented this system through Java and XML language. So when it's discussed about the technologies for developing Android applications, there are two programs that must be installed on the computer for the first. Uh, Java Development Kit, JDK, that implements the Java language specifications and the Java Virtual Machine specifications, and Android Studio, the main tool for developing Android applications. Uh, in this project, I used uh, the most recent version, the environment, Android Studio, Arctic Fox. Uh, so when it comes to machine learning, uh, machine learning, uh, or ML is a type uh, of artificial intelligence that allows software applications to become more accurate at predicting outcomes uh, without being expl explicitly programmed to do so. Uh, machine learning has given us self-driving cars, uh, practical speech recognition, effective web search, image face recognition, and um, a lot more. Uh, so ML Kit is a mobile SDK that enables that enables Google's machine learning tool with an Android application. It's totally free and it gives developers maximum flexibility in its application. Uh, the ML Kit com uh, comprises ten com completed APIs that allow it to work with various areas of machine learning. And in this project, I use uh, text recognition API, barcode scanning API, and uh, object detection and tracking API. Uh, Camera X framework is a collection of libraries designed to make working with Android device cameras easier. Uh, developing applications that use camera has always be, been demanding, but uh, these applications are also most dynamic on the user side. Uh, developers can use uh, developers use Camera X to access um, the device's camera via use case. Currently, there are three user user cases available: preview use case that uses the preview view class to display the image on the screen. Um, image analysis use case that uses, uh, that gain access uh, to the processing of uh, uh, individual camera frames and uh, send them to custom algorithms such as MLKit. And uh, image ca capture use case that maintains high quality images. And uh, usage uh, scenarios can be combined. For example, an application can use the preview case to show us uh, an, an image uh, uh, that the camera sees uh, uh, the image uh, analysis case to de determine if people in the picture are laughing uh, and the image capture case to take a picture, for example. Um, and finally, I'm going to talk about the practical application that I have developed for this project. Uh, I will show you a preview of the application itself on the next side. Uh, for now, I will focus on explaining what this application does. And uh, so on this system represents the design and implemented model for recognizing objects, text, and barcodes. So that is the main purpose. Also, there is an option to save detected data and uh, have a look at it later in applications history. Um, given the complexity of this application, I will describe the logic of most important parts of the system. Uh, I will go through SQL uh, Lite database, uh, reading logic uh, for camera, reading history, custom view classes, and the helper classes. Uh, so, database. <coughs> uh, SQL Lite is an open source SQL database that stores data to a text file on devices' internal storage. Android comes in with built-in SQL Lite database implementation, and in this project, I implement in the database for saving the data that user gets from the camera. Uh, it's it is presented with two tables, text table and barcode table. Text table saves data from text recognition API, while barcode table saves data from uh, QR detections. Uh, the most demanding logic uh, of the realized model is the logic of reading uh, and uh, processing frames the, from, uh, from the camera. Each activity that uh, works with the camera is defined separately and each analyzes the image in its own way. Uh, the logics of all activities that work with the camera are very similar, and it depends on process camera provider object uh, that class serve to work with the camera. Um, 
image analyzers per perform uh, image processing, computer vision, or machine learning that I use in this project. It sends a particular frame to process where ML key talkers. Uh, reading history is related uh, to SQLI database that I explained earlier, so I won't waste much time on that. It allows users to save the data they got from the camera. Uh, custom view classes. Uh, custom view classes control the logic uh, that occurs when a camera is open. They are presented at scanning line for text recognition functionality and scanning box uh, for bar barcode functionality. And finally, helper classes. Uh, uh, they do exactly what their name says. They they make working with uh, dates, bitmaps, uh, storage, and sounds uh, easier. So that's the ma main purpose. And uh, at the very end, uh, I will show you a practical video of the application's functional uh, functionality. Uh, so uh, <laughs> this is, a, I hope you can see video because of screen. This is splash screen and main screen. And the navigation drawer, I clicked object detecting, that's the first functionality. And this is an example of an object detecting and tracking in real time. App recognized glass, it's home goods. As you can see, if the object is not recognized, I just show tracking uh, ID. Uh, so this is first, uh, this is example. Now I'll show text recognition API. This is example of text recognition in real time. Um, if I click, if I click uh, save button, the reading will be saved in the database. Um, that uh, that's yes. This uh, that was a text recognition API. Now I will show you. Okay, first now I dropped my phone. <laughs> now I will show um, QR code detecting. Uh, so it is really fast, as you can see. It uh, also works in real time, and um, I can save it also. Uh, in top right uh, action bar menu, there is a history option. You can see here a list of uh, saved readings. Uh, you can preview it, uh, or uh, you can delete it, as you can see. Um, if you want to delete uh, one item, uh, you need to confirm your action. Um, I think I'll show that option too. Yes. So if you want to delete something, you must confirm it. And um, this is the same thing uh, just for the barcode uh, detections. It is represented at Android U pager functionality. Uh, so this is the this is the application uh, short preview. And um, so at the end, I would like to say a few words about everything. Uh, machine learning can be a competitive advantage to any company as well as Android programming because uh, Android development has a lot uh, to offer to software, to software developers and business uh, looking to build their own, own Android systems in the future. Smart glasses will also use Android, so there is a bright future in this sphere. Um, and, and that would be all. Uh, th thank you so much for meeting with me today. It was such a pleasure for me to uh, demonstrate this system and to learn more about other team systems. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, <laughs> I would be glad to answer it. Okay, thank you also. Very interesting presentation. Thank you. <laughs> so if uh, any of the uh, uh audience has uh, questions okay please thank you i would just uh, like to explain something and i would uh, just like to say um, congratulations to to our dear colleague uh, milan Pelesh. Uh, i think this uh, work and this research that uh, uh, he has conducted uh, along with um, uh, our other professors are amazing and I really enjoyed the presentation and I'm uh, looking forward to dear Milan to your to see your next research. Thank you. Thank you very much, Milana. This I really appreciate it. So we have another question, please. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, very nice presentation and very good project. Uh, just uh, one question. Can we use this, for example, for 
personal tourist guide, for example, for some city? Uh, yes, it can be used in that purpose because we have functionality for barcode scanning and uh, uh, they can use it uh, just to to recognize something uh, in, uh, with, with guides, especially. And uh, text recognition is really useful. They can use it for real-time uh, translation, for example, uh, in uh, some foreign country, country of course. Uh, they can scan it in real time and then send it to other machine learning functionality for real time translate and get the translation in uh, in uh, their own language. So, of course, uh, this system can be used in uh, uh, various areas of um, uh, of everything. So, yes, I think it's OK. OK, thank you. Thank you. If there are any, uh, other questions, or we can uh, go forward to the next uh, presentation. So the next presentation is titled Implementation of e-commerce software solutions on the example of uh, Veligara software. Authors is... Uh, Juroš Todorovic, Dragana Petrovic, and Vladimir Vukovic. Is any of the persons presenting here? Hi, hi, I'm here, Urš. Ah, hello. Hello, uh, just to see how can I share my screen here. Near the small mm -hmm. hand button on the but on uh, on uh, mm -hmm. the downside of the mm -hmm. screen. It's a, see. a upwards arrow in a box. Mm -hmm. I see it now. Just a moment. Okay. Is it okay? You can see my presentation uh, on screen. You need to click uh, share screen. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. Click the screen and mm -hmm. then uh, click the share button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I it appeared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am Urosh, and on the on behalf of uh, uh, Information Technology School and uh, authors Dragana Petrovic and Vladimir, uh, Vladimir Vukovic, I will present uh, uh, this uh, interesting uh, e-commerce solution. So uh, I will start with the basic e-commerce definition. So e-commerce is uh, an area of electronic business that represents the processes of buying and selling goods and services using computer networks. Uh, however, uh, this pro so, process uh, can, you, can I one moment? Can I stop you? Uh, one moment. Do you have a presentation or? Uh, yes, yes, I share. So, just so a we, we see your see. screen, but we don't see the presentation. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. Uh, Not sure. Okay, just to see how, how to... we can see your screen but not mm -hmm. the presentation so just a moment. if you have so a powerpoint uh, yes I yes i have just a moment to see what's the, the issue i will enter again you need to click your entire screen there to yes yes i did it uh, yeah. so okay is good now uh yes now we see the presentation it's fine okay 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 Excellent. now it's fine okay sorry so uh no problem uh, uh, so I will start again. Uh, E-commerce is uh, an area of e-business that represents uh, the process of uh, buying and selling goods uh, using uh, computer networks. Uh, however, this process is not only limited to that, it is also uh, not just buying and selling, but it also includes all resale and after sales transactions in the supply chain, such as internet marketing, for example. So uh, this uh, Oligara software is a solution uh, for the sellers of jewelry over the internet, especially the websites such as uh, eBay, Amazon. So basically all the most important uh, websites which offer uh, in their services. Uh, 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 just one. Uh, offers that uh, we can sell uh, jewelry uh, uh, like uh, very expensive jewelry such as diamond jewelry and uh, other precious uh, precious gemstone jewelry so uh, it is uh, uh, an online jewelry manager which facilitates the creation of unique 
product catalog uh, it also saves time and money and effort in creating a lot of uh, listings listings are basically items or products which you're going to offer for sale uh, it is also uh, enterprise resource planning system unique solutions for e-commerce jewelry and customers relationship management uh, system uh, so I, I said which are most important uh, important markets for this uh, this software it is amazon ebay etsy sears uh, it is also integrated uh, with uh, uh, with other uh, other uh, smaller markets. Uh, it is it offers uh, also uh, other sale jewelry and diamonds uh, under this system. We mean uh, rap, uh, system we, which we can sell under this uh, uh, this uh, uh, eBay uh, <laughs> e-commerce uh, websites. We can sell. On a uh, RAPnet, uh, we can offer uh, uh, GIA certificates, uh, which we can add to our products, which is important when selling on on uh, these websites for the uh, trust in uh, to to get trust from the customers because usually these items are very expensive. It maps the uh, the technical data of jewelry according to the requirements of the uh, online markets in which we are going to sell. Uh, uh, it uh, it includes, like I said, the integration of customer relationship management, email marketing system, automation of market, marketing on social networks, so we can uh, share uh, our products. Uh, it is also integrated with Facebook Shop, which we can uh, offer our products even there. It, in, and start automatic marketing uh, uh, campaigns uh, over uh, Facebook business. Uh, it, it offers wholesale, uh, resale, and dropshipping operations. It op off offers multiple warehouses, and I will explain uh, what that means uh, later. Uh, uh, logistics and inventory management. It, it has also integrated mini uh, website of the of the user for the user of that user. I, by user, I mean seller on the on the uh, on the solution software solution. Uh, it was also offers online catalogs and PDF catalogs, creating uh, advanced uh, brand, uh, branded uh, uh, jewelry websites. So, uh, what what does uh, Valigar offer? Valigar offers content generators uh, generators such as automatic creation of titles, product titles, tags, product de descriptions. So, when you enter uh, the the data of uh, correct uh, info of the product, you can automatically generate different uh, titles, tags, and product des descriptions. And by that way, you can uh, apply uh, the products uh, based on characteristics of the selling website. Because on uh, every market, it uh, it is different, like uh, characters, character limits on the titles, on the descriptions, number of images, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, directly on the website, you can uh, or the solution of the software, you can uh, uh, upload the images of the product. It also automatically integrates with with uh, GIA laboratory for certificate uploading, because this uh, this requires often uh, official job uh, lab uh, certificates for the selling. So uh, Valigar is contained of. Uh, dashboard, catalog, inventory, channels, orders, and statistics. So, just a moment. So, yes, I'm So, Someone mics. Now it's mic mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 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 those that are not uh, speaking, please turn off the uh, microphone so that we can hear better. Thank you. So, uh, uh, the creation of the product starts with uh, uh, under inventory part, and the first step is the jewelry contains gemstone. We add uh, gemstone by clicking on the inventory uh, in the uh, header part, and under the left uh, uh, down corner, we select gemstone. So, creating gemstone. gemstone, we start at the main part, 
main parts are uh, main stock certificate and the other parameters. So uh, the main part uh, is the essential part of entering the necessary data, and these are title, uh, the name that is uh, the uh, of the precious stone, such as diamond, Tanzanite, uh, or whichever we have. Uh, code uh, code serves uh, for easier connection of the model. The precious stone. It is the most. Uh, it is the si uh, similar to to the title part. Type uh, type is a, a, a type of precious uh, stone. I said like a diamond. Uh, it offers automatically to select uh, which which we are going to offer. Uh, co uh, we have under that comments. In there is comments if there we have comments or re remark regarding the specific stone. Gemstone price, uh, which is the price of the, the precious stone, carat price, uh, price per carat, and product and listing uh, precious uh, of precious stones is made. So uh, uh, the first three fields are uh, essential and must contain the appropriate data. Uh, under uh, the just moment under the under the, the the other fields which are essential and must contain the appropriate data, other options are not necessary. So uh, we have after that uh, uh, stock, which uh, we are using to manage the amount of precious stones we have, uh, the quantity uh, unique of the gemstone and the uh, uh, Unique. If the gemstone is unique and available, it is uh, in limited quantity. The option is selected here. You can see uh, here on the stock, on the certificate. The section allows you uh, allows us to enter a gemstone certificate, like basically just the data for the creating the gemstone details. Uh, uh, after that, we we are going to. Create mo uh, we are going uh, creating the model itself. That is we are doing by going uh, under uh, models add add model, and after that we are entering these uh, three parts which are important for uh, for for the item itself we are going to sell. So we select uh, under models we have model code basic type. Commercial. Commercial is. Uh, I will start with the model. Uh, that is. Uh, that is this part here. We enter a model code. Uh, type of. We select the type of the jewelry, such as ring, necklace, or whichever we, we are going to sell. Collection. Uh, we are going to select collection which we are going to to offer. Such for example, it can be wedding ring, engagement ring, wedding band, etc. Et so. Uh, after that, we are moving to basic part, which are uh, uh, we selecting metals. Uh, we add exact gemstone we want to sell. Under this part, we are going to select the sizes we are going to offer. We can select uh, multiple sizes. We can select multiple gemstone, and by doing that, we can create uh, uh, from uh, one model. We can create like 100 uh, products so at the uh, at, uh, click of the one button. Under a commercial type, uh, we have a specific, uh, uh, specific uh, uh, characteristics for each market. Uh, we can enter there, we can enter a uh, uh, title of the, of the item on, on the market, such as Etsy, eBay and uh, Amazon. Uh, after filling the variations for the precious metals, metals uh, we are going to move on filling in the gemstone field. We can do it, do it by set stone parameters and set specific stones. So uh, we can select uh, uh, multiple stones, like I said, and uh, it, or we can offer uh, one stone. It, it can be add here or added automatically uh, uh, when we are uh, created in in uh, like in the first step of the starting with the, the presentation. So uh, I said like uh, we have sizes field, dimensions field, stock and media. We do it that on this part. 
uh, we have the, if the product has dimensions, uh, weight, quantity, uh, we choose uh, quantity we have, sizes, uh, available sizes. It is all already preset and uh, uh, we can uh, even uh, make uh, ourselves uh, the, the sizes we want. And under media, we, are, we have to, we can upload uh, media here. Media, uh, media is uh, uploading images of the product and videos of the product. Uh, here is the confirmation field when we are finishing with entering all the data. Uh, we click uh, we click create and automatically uh, these are products created from one model. In this example, there were exactly three, uh, three products made under one uh, model. So the conclusions presents, we, pre, we are we were presenting the implementing of Oligara software in one area, specific area of electronic business, which is uh, jewelry selling and trading. Uh, also the materials uh, which we are, uh, which the product are made, uh, marketplaces where, when we, which we can uh, offer this integrated software. And uh, there are also other important uh, features of this, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, interesting e-commerce solution, such as automatic uh, gen uh, generator of uh, titles and descriptions. Uh, also, uh, it offers uh, mini websites. We can create using uh, uh, predefined uh, catalogs here on the on the uh, application, and uh, basically uh, that that would be it. Under we have a lot more, but it wasn't. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't the, the, the subject of the, the research under this. The, the subject of this research is, was just creating the, the listing uh, using uh, this uh, software. Okay, and that's, uh, that would be all for now. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to help. Uh, thank you. Uh... So, if uh, someone uh, has to ask any questions regarding the theme of the presented paper, <clears throat> if not, uh, we can go further to the next presentation. Uh, I don't know if uh, is here for uh, some uh, Mr. Yes, uh, I am here. You are here. Yes. The, the paper is titled Reliability of Data-Driven Internet of Things Systems. So uh, uh, we can start with, I think I have a question. Uh, I have a question here from uh, Dragana Petrovic. Uh, the question is re related to this paper or to the neck to the, the last paper that was presented by Mr. Urosh earlier. So uh, if, if, the, if it is a question for the, the previous paper, uh, we should ask you here or... We, we cannot hear you. If you are speaking, uh, I think the, you should turn on the microphone. Uh, just a second. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. So, is a question related to the previous paper or uh, is something uh, to add? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. You can talk. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. I'm sorry. Maybe uh, you cannot hear us. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, can you tell me the question? So uh, we uh, thought if you have to ask any question because you raised uh -huh. the other hand, you you press the hand button. Uh, yes, I don't have any question. Uh, okay, sorry then. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pokorny, you can uh, continue with your presentation. Uh, okay, you can, thank you. Actually, you can start it because 
Thank you. Uh, okay. We are hearing you, yes. Can you hear can you see the presentation? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, can you hear me clearly loudly? Yes, everything is fine. Oh, thank you. So I will proceed with my presentation. Uh, let me uh, say uh, some facts about me. I am professor at the Faculty of Contempt Contemporary Arts, uh, and uh, I am professor of Applied Studies and the Information Technology School. Of course, I was before professor at the Military Academy of the Defense University, and uh, I have uh, about 40 years uh, uh, experience in reliability. So this is why reliability is here at the topic. Okay, let's go to the uh, presentation. <clears throat> the theory and practice of reliability began to emerge at the second part of the last century, about 50s. And the Internet of Things uh, started uh, about 40 years uh, later, so at the end of the last century. And uh, <clears throat> as we uh, saw uh, pro from the previous uh, presentations, uh, IoT can be very complex. And uh, if <clears throat> data is added to this, so data-driven IoT is uh, <clears throat> uh, more complex, yeah, because data are a component of this system. And if we added artificial intelligence, which is uh, now uh, <clears throat> more and more in various fields, and data-driven IoT is not an exception, it can be more and more complex. And uh, <clears throat> uh, what is very important here, that anything of these can fail. And this is the task of reliability. So reliability of all of these must be taken into account. Uh, when we are speaking about data-driven Internet of Things, uh, data being data driven means that all decisions and processes are based on the data and being based on data means using data and using data means at least collecting and analyzing data and of course this implies using some kind of communication and of course using communication uh, it doesn't matter if you it, this, uh, as a person or organization means using different technologies, yeah? different devices, networks, softwares, Internet of Things, and so on. And as I said before, anything of these can fail. And uh, <clears throat> of course, we want to avoid failure. Yeah? And if failure happens, we want to uh, resolve it. And anything of these is task of reliability. <clears throat> when I'm speaking about Internet of Things, yeah, this is <clears throat> Uh, very important now, yeah. Uh, this, uh, uh, this, the aim of the IoT is to transform human society, yeah, to become intelligent. And uh, what is the meaning of intelligent when we are speaking about Internet of Things devices? It means that it can be connected to the in Internet uh, main, yeah. And uh, as I said, Internet of Things is uh, complicated, and it includes hardware, software and humans sometimes, and now uh, uh, much more uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, of course, we can uh, conclude from this that the reliability of IoT depends uh, not only on hardware, but on software and, and on human. And of course, if it, uh, I, uh, artificial intelligence is added, uh, of course, of artificial intelligence. And uh, uh, this uh, point is that the reliability is one of the main challenges that must be addressed to enable this, what we uh, expected from the Internet of Things. And the reliability is connected with availability and maintainability. So, uh, I did some uh, definitions of this. But instead to go through these uh, formal definitions, I will use some examples. Uh, let's uh, take uh, an airplane. Uh, of course, it reminds me that uh, uh, during the 80s, uh, uh, here in the former Yugoslavia and in the Romania, uh, we produced uh, the uh, military airplane, which was designed jointly during the 70s uh, of the last century. Of course, it can be a uh, uh, civilian airplane with passengers. And if this airplane crashes, 
if, if, if this is a civilian airplane and crashes with 300 people, <clears throat> this is very, very serious. Yeah? And in that case, we are speaking about reliability, because reliability is probability that some uh, device, uh, some production will perform certain functions uh, for a certain period. For example, that this airplane will fly for six hours without fail. Yeah? And in, for example, this uh, airplane cannot take off from the uh, airport. In that case, we are speaking about availability because uh, this airplane is not available. And of course, if this is not available, we want to uh, <clears throat> return this airplane to the uh, uh, operational state. And this is the task of maintainability. So I think uh, from this example, everyone can understand the differences between reliability, availability, and maintainability. When I'm speaking uh, about reliability, we are speaking mainly about time period. And we are speaking of availability, we are uh, speaking about point in time, not of, of time period. Now, let's go to the reliability of data-driven IoT elements. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as, uh, I said the elements are hardware, software, human, data, and uh, artificial intelligence. When I'm speaking about uh, uh, hardware, uh, as I said before, theory of uh, reliability started about the uh, uh, 50s from the last century. So, uh, the theory and the practice of hardware reliability is well known. But uh, we are now have every day uh, new products, and uh, these products uh, uh, cannot be properly tested because there is not enough time. And that's, that's the problem today. Uh, as I said, I did some calculations for the devices which were produced uh, for the, this airplane, which were produced jointly uh, from Romania and uh, the former Yugoslavia. And of course, I have uh, experience with this, and I did this with a well-known military handbook, 270, which is also today primarily used to calculate the reliability of the electronic devices. Of course, as I said, the commercial hardware uh, often lacks established reliability, and that's the problem. When we're speaking about the software reliability, there are many software reliability models, but none is universally accepted. The, uh, uh, we have here too much theory and uh, 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 not so uh, much uh, uh, applicability of this theory. And uh, the, another problem, software reliability requirements are rar rarely, if ever, adequately specified. Yeah? And uh, another problem, uh, enhan enhancing reliability by redundant software is uh, different from uh, uh, hardware. Because if we have two uh, redundant software uh, uh, softwares, uh, what is the problem? Problem is, is that the uh, error in each of these is at the same point. So uh, the hardware uh, fails in different way uh, compared to the software. When I speak about human, human reliability, of course, there are different approaches and models. And uh, if we uh, uh, rely just uh, at that, uh, that the failures can be completely prevented by procedures, rules, cons, standards, and laws. Uh, that's not the case. But uh, the case is that that can be reduced by these the same measures. The new thing here is reliability of data. And uh, in order to build trust in data, it is critical that this is reliable, which means that it's complete and accurate, at least. Business leaders need reliable data to make reliable de de decisions. So obviously, we uh, must analyze the reliability of data. And if we edit here, uh, artificial intelligence, which is the case now, yeah? and uh, that's the, another problem because there are no uh, uh, theory, uh, there are no uh, enough practice uh, about the reliability of artificial intelligence. And of course, this is an important question, and uh, that question attracted the attention of international standard organization and international electronic uh, electrotechnical 
committee. Is there anything else? Yes, there are other factors which include uh, protocols and energy efficiency, standardization, other influences and uh, security and so on. And how we can calculate the reliability of the data-driven IoT system? We saw that we have uh, hardware, we have software, we have data, we have uh, human, we have uh, artificial intelligence. So this is the formula which is pretty uh, simple. Yeah? Uh, but we need the reliability of these components, hardware, software, uh, human and data. Yeah? And uh, this uh, formula is valid only if failures of these components are mutually exclusive. If this is not the case, this formula will be uh, more complicated. Yeah? And the main problem here is how to uh, calculate the reliability of these uh, components. As I said, the, the main problem here is about the uh, data, about artificial intelligence. And as a conclusion, in this short explanation, uh, reliability assessment and analysis of data-driven Internet of Things elements and system require knowledge for many different technical and other areas and teamworks. We saw we have uh, hardware, we have software, we have human, we have also data, we have artificial inter intelligence. And this is not the case, uh, the task for one man because one man cannot uh, know everything else. So this is the task for teamwork. Or if this task for uh, one man, this man must. Uh, also consult uh, the uh, people from other areas. Yeah? If artificial intelligence uh, can be uh, or is component of this system, it can be added to this formula in the same way. I didn't, uh, I didn't this uh, in this case, but it can be uh, added in the same way. And. Uh, Reliability of data-driven Internet of Things is not always the primary concern of in IoT practice. This is also the case today. And this is the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you for your uh, attention. Okay, thank you. We, it seems that we have a question. Mr. George Lazarou, please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pokarni, for your excellent presentation. My question is um, whether you might like to say something about uh, uh, the role of uh, uh, predictive analytics algorithms in uh, data-driven Internet of Things systems. Uh, you say predictive? Uh, predictive analytics algorithms. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, we are interested in, uh, to uh, so uh, to prognose to uh, so uh, prognostic uh, reliability yeah we, we want to uh, know what will uh, happen in the future yeah yes yes mm. and uh, uh, it can uh, it can help uh, in this area uh, th this is implemented in some way in hardware yeah uh, but it, it can be uh, I, I think it can be implemented uh, I, uh, I didn't really uh, do this, or I really didn't, uh, didn't really research this, but I think that it can be implemented also. Because uh, predictive analytics is in fashion nowadays, and uh, yeah. this is why I, um, I saw it uh, uh, in practice in, in Texas with uh, uh, some sort of um, autonomous truck. Yeah. And it used such uh, um, a predictive analytics algorithm, and uh, thus uh, it could identify any issues around it, and uh, it could even estimate uh, the weight uh, that um, a, a road nearby, um, a bridge nearby, uh, could could support its weight. And, and it seemed fantastic by using predictive analytics and collecting uh, data, data move, uh, moving forwards. Yes, I agree. Uh, okay, reliability is the uh, main problem uh, to accept autonomous vehicles, yeah? because uh, uh, people are not uh, <clears throat> sure what will happen uh, in, in this case. 
So I think uh, it, it's in the, uh, you can uh, see this on the internet uh, or uh, in, in the literature about this, that the reliability is the main problem uh, to accept uh, autonomous vehicle. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you also. Do we have other questions? Okay. Someone else? else? Yes. Yes, Once just more. okay, please. Thank you, Professor, for a very good presentation and good. Uh, the subject you choose is, is very interesting, uh, Professor uh, uh, Lazaro. Lazaro uh, said that uh, about autonomous trucks, we have a paper last year about the maintaining the autom autonomous vehicles. So there is those the issues that you pointed out is very important. Uh, when, uh, what's uh, what's the uh, probability for some part to, to cancel, to, to to become unfunctional in the autonomous vehicle? But uh, what I want to just to ask a professor, for, can in this uh, formula you said for uh, a reliability of Internet of Things, is there a a uh, place for network. You said there is a uh, human resource, uh, hardware, software, and but there is also issue of network. Okay, uh, uh, we can uh, add uh, the network as the uh, separate component, but uh, we can uh, include the reliability of the network in the reliability of the hardware and the reliability of the software. Yeah, so <clears throat> sometimes. Uh, we include this in the, uh, these components uh, because network, of course, uh, comprises of hardware and, of course, of software. So we can include this in this. Or if it is uh, uh, appropriate, <clears throat> uh, we can uh, include the network as a separate uh, uh, component. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fine. Other uh, questions for this paper, please? If not, we can uh, go to the next one. I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, thank you also, uh, Mr. Pokorny. Uh, interesting subject. So, uh, the next one, we already presented the penetration text, uh, testing. So, we will pass to the next one. Uh, it is titled, Can we predict the effects of using the interactive features of the website? Uh, is someone uh, to present it? Yes, I'm here. My name is Dusan Stojakovic. I hope you hear me well. Hello, uh, welcome. Uh, we are hearing you. Yes. Thank you so much. I would like to apologize firstly for not being able to change my name because I'm from my business computer, so it was blocked for changing the name. But I would shortly present myself and I would like to greet you from Belgrade in the name of my colleagues Milica Evremovic, Hanna Stefanovic and Nada Staletic. So, in the presentation, I also included our emails. So, if you like to raise a, a question or to contact us after the presentation, please feel free to, to join us. So, I would turn off my camera to focus on the presentation now and give me one second just to share, to share the slides. One second, please. So, so it's fine. It's working. Sorry. It is working. Sorry. It's working. Yes. Everything. Some technical looks issues. Fine. Yes. So, yes. Uh, do you see my presentation mode now? Yes. It's uh, large. It's large. Yes. So, as you announced uh, while uh, telling the name of the presentation, uh, our goal today is to deep dive into the topic of if we can predict the effects of using the interactive features of the website. Actually, this topic is, the topic is not a new one, but it is interesting because there is different approaches to what is standing behind, behind of it. So let us see what we try to do through our paper. So as you already know, one of the most commonly used tools for encouraging two-way communication or bi-directional communication is the company website. 
So the importance of this digital tool is rising, especially after the, the COVID pandemic situation and moving to the digital world. The website is the mirror of the company and has a significant impact on creating images in the minds of consumers regarding the company. So it is not only a reputational tool, but something that is tackling our, our paper is something that is dealing also with employer branding. So the primary goal of my colleagues and me in this paper is to compare three modules for research of the interactivity written by the authors Song Liu and Wu, analysis of dimension models and the application of the Song model to obtain effects on consumers after the applied interactive features of the website. So let me try to present you more information on this. So, interactive website include features such as the ability to send links to friends. Most probably we already did this. Apply for jobs, practice skills, or take training courses online, as well as a website map, email hotlink, online chat room, even uh, digital rob robot chatbots, drop down search menu, website search, and text, etc. As an added benefit, an interactive website gives users the opinion option to share website content via the social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, or Reddit, and is integrated with other digital marketing tools such as mobile marketing and email marketing that is also trending nowadays. So, taking this into account, for the purpose of this research, we created the same job practice training course advertisement presented through interactive and non-interactive website. So, we compared two ways of sharing or presenting the content with the interactive option and with non-interactive option on the website, and we did a comparison of this. To implement this and to get the results, and to try to prove or, or uh, just show that hypotheses are not pr uh, probable, we use the pre-test, then the main survey, and then the research instruments. So I would shortly present each of these. For the pre-test, before testing, we performed the pre-test, which included 350 students of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering in Belgrade. All the respondents were in the first year of studies. Respondents completed a survey. Based on the given answers, we uh, singled out 120 students interested in looking for a job practice training course of the website. This was our target group that was relevant for doing the research. Then, for the main survey, in the primary survey, the students uh, singled out in the pre-testing stage were divided into six groups of 20 students each. Selected students were uh, randomly given an interactive and non-interactive websites and a 30-minute time to view the website obtained. This randomly chosen uh, model is very important to be objective in the collecting data. So, t-tests for large independent samples were used to compare the, uh, the responses from people uh, who use interactive and non-interactive websites. The statistical significance ranged from a p-value of 0.05 to a p-value 0.01. It was necessary to use statistical package for the social science to perform the statistical analysis. So let me continue. Uh, considering the hypotheses, we had two main hypotheses, or the first one and the second one. Although a large number of authors have been researching interactivity, this work is specific in that it crosses three models for interactive research. Previous research has shown that the impact of interactive characteristics exists, but this work goes deeper into the analysis and explore exactly what effects we can expect in users' behavior, which is why the following hypothesis is set. So the first one is, as you could see on the screen, Known effects on consumers are created through the use of interactive website features. The number of actions taken by site users increases when communicating with candidates when using interactive features of the website. So leading to the formulation of a new hypothesis, if you observe a group of respondents interested in looking uh, for work or any professional training in the form of training course or internships, which is also rising considering moving to the digital world, so it was the right timing to do such a research. And so our second thesis 
uh, is the one communicating with job internship training course candidates via the website, adding interactive features encourage more people to take action. So let us see what we did with the research itself. So the first step in testing a hypothesis is to establish statistically significant differences between the interactive and non-interactive website according to subtest to have this comparability. Then a more profound analysis is undertaken by the questions used in the survey which belong to this subtest. So I would shortly drive you through the data presenting in the, presented in the chart. After performing the analysis, it is established that there are statistically significant differences in the three subtests. The first one, attitude towards the website. Respondents who used an interactive website have a higher score. Then satisfaction. Respondents who used the interactive website have a higher score. Then the, the last but not least, overall website quality. Respondents who used an interactive website have a higher score. So let me move on. Sorry, I just just mishmashed my my slides when preparing for for sharing the screen. So I would just jump to the to the next one and then come back to the previous one. So the next one is results of respondents by answers within the research model. So uh, you could look in details uh, at the respondents answers within each subtest. You can see questions in which there is a statistically significant difference in the respondents responses to the interactive and non interactive one. So within the subtests attitude toward the website, statistically significant differences occur in the following questions. I think the website is suitable, which is very important to share the message. So the interactive website respondents have a higher score than the non-interactive website responders. The next one, I think the website is appealing. The interactive website respondents have a higher score than the non-interactive website responders. So within the subtest satisfaction, which is also one of the crucial aspects, there are statistically significant differences in one question only. I'm satisfied with the experience of the website. And some uh, theories said that the experience is one of the crucial uh, parts of our digital journey. They have a higher score in, uh, achieved in the interactive website respondents compared to the non-interactive ones. So let me move back to this to the to, to the order of slides that the mishmash in the meantime and sorry for this so we could continue deep diving into the analysis within the subtests overall website quality statistically significant differences are recorded in the following questions the overall quality of looking for a job on a website is the interactive website responders have a higher score than the non-interactive website responders that you could see on the slide and then my feelings towards the website are I mean uh, the interactive website responses have also a higher score than the non-interactive so let me proceed sorry uh this is the last the last table slide so these are the results of applied job practice training course and it is important to state out that from the given table, we can see that the number of registered candidates is 3.8 times higher for the interactive website than for non-interactive website. The number of advertisements the respondents responded to during the survey is 6.69 times higher for interactive than for non-interactive website users while the average number of applications per respondent is 1.76 times higher from the, for the interactive than for the non-interactive websites. This means that this data also could be used for some digital marketing agencies and big companies. An interactive website also offers users the possibility of signing up for a mailing list to receive all the news published at registered email addresses. Of the respondents who used the interactive website, 15 respondents started the mailing list sign-up process. Uh, of 15 respondents who started this process to sign up for an email, seven respondents confirmed the registration via the link obtained to their, their personal email address. So this was the short deep dive into the data we collected through, through our 
our research and the analysis. So this is time for discussion, just to shortly present you what con what conclusions did we meet to our paper. So results in this paper show that when introducing interactive features of the website, we can expect the achieved effects in the form of a positive attitude of users toward the site, which is important because they would stay longer, deep dive for more, more uh, content over the website and have this engaging, uh, let's say, relationship to what we present them. Then greater satisfaction of site users and the impression of greater quality of the use site, which is also important for sharing the, the message. Statistically significant difference we noticed in the question, I think the website is suitable, then I think the website is appealing. I'm satisfied with the experience of the website, the overall quality of looking for a job on a website, and my feelings towards the website are when the users of the interactive site gave, gave a higher score. So, in this way, our first hypothesis is proved. Known effects on consumers are created through interactive website features. Continue with the discussion. Considering our second hypothesis, it is also established that on interactive websites for applying for a job or practice or a training course or such similar content, the percentage of users who took the final action and applied for a job or practice or training course is 3.8. It means almost four times higher than the number of non-interactive website users. The number of applications for a job uh, and we know that nowadays more and more automatic machines and robots are dealing with the applications or practice or training course is 6.69 times higher for the interactive website than for the non-interactive one. And we are sorry to, to say uh, that there is a lot of non-interactive websites uh, existing still in the digital universe. In this way, the second hypothesis is proved. When communicating with job training course candidates via the website, adding interactive features encourages more people to take action. So this is also a very important conclusion for the education profiles because everything is moving online, even educational courses. So I hope I stop presenting my screen. I think you heard me well. Sorry for mishmashing the order of the slides while I try to, to just share them. I did it, I did it by, by chance. So if you have any questions, I would be glad to, to take them or just to add that in parallel with this research, we came to the conclusion that there is a lot of, let's say, external standalone services that are offering engaging and interactive features to the existing website. So if you have a non-interactive website, you could easily make it become interactive by using some external tools, which is also rising opportunities for everybody, both for those who want to share the message and the content, and both for those who need to be engaged and we need to be engaged as, as a digital, digital public. So thank you in my name and in the name of my co-authors. I try to be short. Thank you also. Uh, if uh, someone has uh, any addition to the team. Okay. So uh, I think we can uh, continue to the next paper. Uh, if uh, uh, if uh, the next paper is efficiency of applying NLP principles in communication between the Internet of Things and Mars City citizens. If uh, any of the authors is, uh, is only one author, Alexandra Radu, if she is present. If uh, not, we can go to the next one. Do you hear me? I'm here. You are Hello. here? Oh, you have another... Uh, you have another name. Yes, uh, so yes no because it's my, it's my computer. Uh, yes, it's, it's another account. Computer. No problem, you can present. Is the account. Uh, yes, I'm... Uh, 
presenting now just a moment please okay no problem take your time so you can uh, share the presentation To share the screen, there is a button with a rectangle and an upwards arrow inside. In case you need help, please let us know. I know, uh, but it not appears to the... Do you see my presentation now? Uh, not yet. You need to... Uh, select to to click on it and then click share screen to to be able to uh, to part okay now it appeared yes we can it see appeared. it yes yes that's fine now thank you thank you very much for your patience um i'm starting to saying that uh, from my point of view um the um, internet means communication and when we think about communication we have to think not only at the techno technological solutions but at the uh, human solutions at the human uh, being com um, that uh, it's a part of uh, this uh, communicating system um this is the um, main subject of my um, work uh, and this is the um, reason for what i choose to to um, say uh, what are the efficiency of applying nlp principles in communication uh, because uh, the human being uh, have to be uh, the main subject um, from my point of view. Um, what is the context? The context, the context is uh, the massive development of the cities that require an improvement of the citizen involving. Cities are expect expecting massive growth in the coming years. Urbanization projects are looking at 2.5 billion uh, more people living in the cities. So we have to think um, that with that kind of growth, the city government can no longer afford to lag behind in the digital landscape. Um, connecting, engaging, and fulfilling uh, of services between city and government will need to become increasingly digitized to keep up with rising demand while budgets remain tight or remain uh, have to face uh, uh, deep cuts. Digital experience can be made more efficient when uh, complemented, from my point of view, uh, by NLAP principles, um, like image recognition and robotics. And this efficiency translate to better experience and reduce cost if we apply this principle. In addition uh, to larger smart city application that cover utilities and traffic management, there are many opportunities to improve citizen engagement and city service delivery. Increase the in, uh, city involvement in communication system involving the idea of smart city automatic, 
basically uh, facilitates the population's access to the Internet of Things and determinate an assertive behavior by applying the principle of neurologic uh, linguistics in communication between citizens and authorities through the cyber system, and that includes the citizen. Why, which is the key? The key can be um, the state and local government house myriad process that require a great, great deal of human interaction to complete manual repetitive tasks. But automating this process could divert uh, human energy to other tasks that require more thoughtful interaction, reducing costs while improving outcomes. However, the automation of certain services is not enough, as success depends on the citizens' openness to this use of this system, and thus his involvement in the develop development of the smart city, smart city. In this regard, solutions like Internet of Things, Computer National uh, Network or Urbanism, Product Decision Making, Information System, cyber physical smart manufacturing system could be the key to the problem, but a key that, in my opinion, uh, that must be doubled by a code to become effective. And I think that in our case, the code is actually neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, I think that everybody knows um, the knows uh, some information uh, in the uh, NLAP uh, neuro linguistic programming, but um, I think that uh, um, a brave um, remind uh, in uh, regard of uh, NLAP criteria is uh, necessary. Uh, what are the main criteria of NLAP? Um, NLAP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, was founded by behavior modelers uh, John Grinder and Richard Bendler to analyze, analyze, analyze and explore the patterns governing such complex process of human behavior. The basic premise of NLAP is that there is a redundancy between the observable macroscopic patterns of human behavior. For example, linguistic and paralinguistic phenomena, eye, eye movement, hand and body position, and other types of per performance distinctions, and patterns, uh, patterns of uh, underlying neural activity governing this behavior. I'm not uh, saying, uh, I'm not uh, listening uh, every. Uh, basic element of the uh, neuro-linguistic uh, programming, programming. Uh, but um, I can mention um, an outcome, the fact that an outcome is identified uh, that is mutually acceptable to the facilitator, which is programmer, and the client, which is programming. Um, this is the explicit criteria for the successful achievement of the outcome or uh, are uh, delineated. Um, from my point of view, uh, more important it uh, to say it's to say what happens with when uh, communication is not between two human subjects, but when the human subject becomes part of a communication system, a cyber, cybernetic system that involves the presence of devices, the body of the human subject become, in this case, uh, turning into a device itself, itself. It is possible to apply the principle of neuro-linguistic uh, programming in this process? If so, how can, uh, the communication of the human subject, which is the Internet of Things, be improved through neuro-linguistic uh, programming. Uh, I think that the key consists in always placing the human subject in the central position as a beneficiary, but also as a coordinator of operations carried out using the Internet of Things. 
then we refer uh, to the disappearance of certain problems that uh, companies face in the current context. We actually refer to the solving certain problems. I uh, refer to solving certain problems also of the human resource as an increasingly precarious labor force, but also as a capital that can be used to the maximum parameters if the process of selection, training, and distribution of the resource were, uh, resource were carried out correctly. Here too comes the overwhelming uh, role of the application of the uh, principle of neurolinguistic programming could play in the communication, mm -hmm. communication between the human individual and the internet as an integral part of its life. But in order to be effective, it must also take into account the principle of neurolinguistic. In fact, to evaluate the emotional states as well as the vast and deep cognitive experience of the subject. Neurolinguistic is, in fact, a humanistic science, uh, in my opinion, as it considers that uh, each individual is equipped from the beginning with all the skills and abilities he needs in order to modulate his own behavior. Through this new humanist movement, we return, in other words, to an era of absolute sincerity in which the subject makes the decision based on strict and correct assessment and the partner, even connected online, behind a summary uh, assessment based on analysis of obvious data can also perform a deeper analysis, including strategies, development, and the mental level translated by each individual who function as an autonomous cyber system through emotion, feelings, and even recording certain changes in the brain. Basically, basically, the biggest mistake is to place the human individual outside the paradigm of the function of the Internet of Things, when in fact, um, I think that he is an integral part and a central element of the whole system. Placing the individual at the center of cybernetic system involves understanding the needs and his reaction of all uh, elements of the system. Any event uh, in the part of cybernetic system, the human being integrated in, in, into the Internet of Things system, will necessarily affect, in one way or in another, all, or, all other parts of the system. Or extending the neurolinguistic experience to the functioning of the cybernetic system as a whole, which also implies the existence of the Internet of Things in human existence, we can deduce that the effects of, of different parts of the system on each other can be modeled, predicted, and changed. Or from this uh, hypothesis of modeling, prediction, and change, can uh, derive uh, many possibilities of application of te technologies that involve neurolinguistic in the process of communication between the human individual and the Internet of Things. I want to present you some examples of the benefits of direct communication in the NLRP system. For example, the need to execute voice or preset command is, can be eliminated because the human individual part of this system could communicate through their own reaction, certain needs. Uh, for example, the temperature of the house could be regulated by a sample assessment of the level of energy comfort of the body of individual or individuals um, that living in that habitat. Or the assessment of a ph physiological reaction, blinking, response speed, changing the physiognomy could help, could implement system parental control, could improve. Uh, this um, uh, parental control. For example, the child no longer has to simplify, uh, to simply com confirm his age in order to have access to certain information like uh, do in this moment, but he could um, 
he um, his reactions uh, could be evaluated before uh, he have access to to these um, systems to these programs that could negatively negatively influence him <clears throat> uh, if we talk um, um, about the staff selection process or communication with the emergency medical system the advantages can be uh, more uh, important uh, for example, the staff selection process, comparative assessment of the candidate's reaction will help the employer to obtain important information about the, um, the veracity, the uh, true uh, character of the information provi provided. Um, some changes in body temper uh, temperature uh, perceived by certain physical reactions or physical reaction that indicate, for example, a heart attack can be transmitted directly to the emergency system uh, via um, involving uh, the NLAB principle in communication. Uh, but... Uh, the um, this um, uh, communication uh, based to the uh, NLAP principle um, even uh, has um, advantage uh, has uh, have to uh, um, have to um, I'm not. To, <laughs> I'm trying to to um, um, find the term. Have to improve. Have to have to um, face uh, the the challenges too. Um, there are the vulnerabilities of a technical nature in, that are ident identified as scalability uh accept, acceptance and operation um interoperability and this is uh, um, the main challenge uh, that uh, involved uh, the um, uh, nlap principle uh, about me uh, in my opinion Intero interoperability include the human being uh, through the elements of system um it's about security and confidentiality of personal data we all know that this is a challenge um and about error tolerance power supply uh, interaction and short range communication uh we have uh, to to think about uh, these um, challenges but we have to think about how we can uh, involve the NLAP principle, including uh, the human being in the uh, Internet of Things, like a, a part of this cybernet uh, cyber system. This is my uh, my presentation. Thank you to all of us. To, uh, for uh, for uh, your attention and if there are uh, the questions okay oh, okay thank you also i see there is one question please uh thank you very much for your, your presentation in fact i don't have a question but uh, a comment to make um there are a lot of uh, companies nowadays that uh, monitor uh, the entire uh, process of um, state of health in real time for their employees, uh, their productivity, their movements, and quantify all of them in some sort of, some sort of score. Thus, I, I, I don't think that uh, uh, there is some uh, sort of chance uh, towards a human-centered uh, approach 
within uh, the Internet of Things uh, uh, society based on um, uh, data-driven um, um, analysis and assessment. Uh, well, in my opinion, the only uh, chance for uh, human beings is uh, either to be extremely creative or to augment themselves technologically. I, I don't think that there might be other chances for uh, human beings uh, taking into account uh, the large scale uh, robotization and automation. Yes, it's true. Thank you, Professor, for your comment. Okay, there are other comments or uh, questions on uh, this topic? If not, we can pass to the next one. Uh, uh, it is, oh, so I see is another question. Please. Uh, no, no, it's not a question. I just need to comment the next paper of the agenda. Um, the authors of the next paper, Svetlana Angelic, Goran Radic, Nikola Dragovic and Dusan Unkulov are not present uh, here today with us. And I thought uh, because uh, Anna Savic, the presenter of the second paper of the uh, agenda for this panel is here and she's pa patiently waiting for her turn. Perhaps uh, she can present a paper, crypto uh, cryptocurrencies as an accelerator of the Yes, please, if, you, uh, if she wants if to possible. present. Okay. If she wants to present, I can uh, uh, give them, uh, her the turn. So the second pa paper was titled Cryptocurrencies as an Accelerator of Sustainable Development. Is it possible to have it presented now? I saw Anna Savic was here. Anna, can you present the paper, please? Okay. So uh, please present it. Uh, okay, you can, uh, you, you have, uh, you appear to have the microphone uh, muted. There is a button on the left side in the bottom part of the screen to unmute your micro microphone so you can speak if it is working. We cannot hear you, so uh, I don't know how to do. Uh, I think you can unmute the microphone too. As no, a I, can I, I can only mute them, but I cannot. Okay, open. sorry. No, I cannot. Uh, she has to go uh, if she hear. Uh, she is written on the forum. Uh, I don't know if she is hearing us. If she's hearing us, I don't know. She says you can hear us. Yes, she hears us. So you go on uh, in the downside of the screen. There are uh, buttons and the left one is with the microphone. You have to click it to uh, unmute it. Otherwise, you cannot uh, talk. You cannot, you can, uh, we cannot hear you without it. If you cannot unmute it, uh, it means you have some technical problems with the computer. So uh, either the button is not working for you or uh, you don't have a microphone valid, not working. Maybe she, uh, her microphone is uh, blocked uh, on the browser, so she needs to allow browser to use her microphone. Yes, yes. If, if she has if she another microphone, I, I don't know what browser she has. 
if it is blocked then uh, she cannot use it obviously but uh, i don't know how to help her in this case yes uh, please if you have another browser if you have another browser you can uh, you can try to open it So uh, let's hope it uh, works now. I think she connected with another uh, from an the other browser now. I just gave access to for the connection. Okay, so uh, now we can see you. Uh, hi, uh, do you hear me now? You should. Uh, uh, close the other connection. Don't, don't have okay. to use them on, uh, in the same time because it's um, uh, it's affecting the sound. Now, now we we can okay. see you and we can also hear you. Uh, okay. Hi, my name is Anna. Uh, now I will present uh, the the paper. Just a second. Uh... Sorry. Uh, do you see my screen? Not yet. You need to click on it and then uh, share, click the button share screen. <laughs> Near the hand button is another one with a rectangle mm -hmm. and inside of it uh, an arrow upwards. So you yes, click that yes. one. Yes. Share screen and then uh, click. And uh, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, now we now we can see we can see your presentation. So it's uh, it's working fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will. Uh, so uh, the the title of the paper uh, is uh, cryptocurrencies as an accelerator of sustainable development written by Hanna Stefanovic, Bojan Kocic, Jana Savic and Nikola Popovic. Uh, globalization and the changes that have affected the world economy conditions the development of new models of thinking, investing, trading and payment methods in the world economy. Uh, end of the uh, 20 and the beginning of the 21st century uh, was marked, marked by rapid uh, technological uh, pro progress, which has not uh, bypassed any economic sector, and all householders have experienced uh, that change. Uh, cryptocurrencies represent a new model of trade and payments, but also a way for making some form, form of earnings. It is a form of property that is used as a digital asset uh, exchanging using new cryptocurrencies algorithm. Uh, let, uh, let uh, say something about uh, 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 introduction. A world economy without borders is undorable the dream of almost all developed countries in the world. And here in this paper, we are talking about desire and the possibilities that the world's la largest global powers will manage global financial and global processes. Uh, as a result of globalization, uh, relationship between people and countries are intersying, uh, where people are beginning to think globally as a whole and to view the world in the new light. Uh, globalization has certain requirements as uh, continuous investment in knowledge, technology, research and development, uh, but however uh, starts to lag be uh, behind in the process of globalization or does not give involved in modern processes will be left significantly behind. 
Today's world is increasing open and hence uh, a well-known reference to the world as a global village has been created. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see the table uh, with in the first line, the year uh, percentage of global income uh, uh, goes to 20% of the richest, percent of global income that goes to 20% of the poorest, and the re relationship between uh, the richest and the poorest. Uh, poorest. Uh, so it is uh, some kind of global economic distribution uh, from uh, uh, year that you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, and uh, uh, it is shown that uh, this, uh, 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 if you if you measure these numbers, uh, you can see in the uh, um, in this uh, line the, for example, uh, thirty uh, and one, thirty two one, and so on. Uh, what can we do? Let's say something uh, about uh, cryptocurrency technology. Over the past years, uh, a faster integration of information and communication technologies has influenced many aspects. It is important to mention a Bitcoin. Uh, a Bitcoin represents the first and in the same time the most popular cryptocurrency. Uh, in, it was created in 2008 and 2009 in the form of open source software, uh, cryptographic digital monetary and payment system that exists online. Uh, they are based, uh, as we all know, on centralized distributed networks, which include a common data transfer technology called blockchain. Uh, on this slide, uh, we can see uh, uh, SHA-256 uh, two, uh, uh, hash function uh, and uh, the, this picture represents um, some of the algorithm that is used in this, uh, uh, in this blockchain technology very often. Uh, about economic aspects of the financial ma market uh, using cryptocurrency trading, we can say that bank banks uh, are uh, circles, uh, the world's financial markets called the bubble of cryptocurrencies. All the forces of uh, bankrupt neoliberal capitalism close their eyes and tastefully love them to involve on all sides of the hidden currency. Today, there are over 2,000 of them and new ones are opening each day. Uh, uh, about possibilities of application and cryptocurrencies, blockchain technolo technologies, uh, we can say that cryptocurrencies can be used now to pay, uh, for example, for travel and accommodation, costs in hotels and other facilities, uh, when we are talking about tourism, for example, but also in uh, other uh, eco uh, other uh, parts of industrial or economy. Uh, blockchain technology, uh, on the other hand, can provide operators a system for sharing information about uh, the availability of accommodation and so, so on. Uh, uh, what we conclude, uh, we can say that globalization is a process that has significantly changed the way of production, distribution, conception, and investing today's worlds. Former methods of payment uh, and universal currencies that served as a means of exchanging slowly begin to lose uh, their dominant role. The global distribution of income shows that today there are more and more poor in the world, and the uh, wealth of the rich is increased by three times in the 20th century as it as we show on the one slide uh, with the table uh, uh, that show the numbers uh, according to uh, some research 
uh, virtual currencies do not meet the basic criteria that one currency should have. It is expected that in the future it will make sense for some investors to in incorporate digital currencies in their portfolios. In banking, the cryptocurrencies does not meet the criteria of cash. And they should continue to take a great part to become a national currency. Uh, there are proposals to form a crypto, a cyber crypto initiative. Uh, for example, the Russian Federation has proposed a cyber initiative uh, to form a new currency that uh, would connect developing countries uh, to markets in Asia, Eastern Europe, Africa and South America through blockchain and smart technology. Uh, today, the currency market is very unstable. Uh, the most famous and definitely most traded cryptocurrencies is under great oscillation uh, due to market failure, inadequate institutional protection, under panning uh, of uh, spec uh, speculative changes. Cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrencies markets today are not suitable choice for individual investors. Uh, new financial crisis will be crisis caused by investment in cryptocurrencies and lose, losses can uh, even be measured in the billions of dollars. The influence of cryptocurrencies on the growth and development of di different business sector will be especially important in the future of, of investments as well as the speed and dynamics of payments. Uh, while the future of most cryptocurrencies is quite uncertain, on the other hand, uh, wider use of blockchain technology can be expected in different uh, business sector. And uh, this was uh, our presentation. Uh, and thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you. You are hearing me? Yes. Uh, nice presentation. If uh, any of the other people are connected here to have comments or questions, we have a question. Yes. Yes. I, I don't have a question. I just uh, want to comment it because uh, I'm following the cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, but uh, it's uh, sad to say, but uh, the most people and uh, the 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 people with it knowledge follows only cryptocurrencies and uh, they don't see the full potential of blockchain technology for example why uh, people don't research about uh, blockchain uh, in school for example the, the students can uh, can get the number of tokens for exam or, and uh, everybody the, can, can see the results and everything. So uh, we, the, there is a need to share more articles with blockchain uh, more than uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, okay. Yes, I can say something about that. Uh, I totally agree with uh, Strahinja, uh, but uh, uh, um, very, very nice zapažanje. Um, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't know the word in English. Uh, 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 observation. Observation. Yes, yes. Thank you, Milena. Um, uh, actually. Um, uh, we are trying now to um, uh, to work in uh, uh, one uh, part uh, that that is used blockchain in uh, collaboration learning. So uh, uh, we uh, plan uh, we developed one model uh, uh, for uh, collaboration learning using blockchain technologies, uh, but um, uh, we need. Um, uh, resources, uh, we need uh, 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 servers and uh, uh, it, is, it, is not, uh, it is not so um, 
cheap to, uh, uh, for example, if you want to involve some university. Uh, now we are negotiating with uh, one of the uh, Belgrade universities uh, to um, uh, to give us the permission to uh, uh, implement uh, 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 one model that we have developed. Uh, it is not me, it is uh, uh, six or seven people working on uh, that, uh, but we still uh, don't have permission. And, and uh, also uh, we um, uh, expected that students will have uh, some internal uh, 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 credits uh, that uh, they will use uh, through this system. Thank you for answer. It, it's nice to hear that uh, people try to involve blockchain in everyday situations. Thank yes, you. yes, we are trying, but uh, uh, it, it not depends only uh, on us, but depends, for example, uh, I will not mention the, this faculty, but uh, we are waiting for the answer. For example, we need uh, uh, three servers with uh, some, uh, it is hardware problem now. I to hope that you will solve that. Yes, me too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you also. So uh, the next paper, uh, uh is uh, we have a paper uh, i understand that uh, the authors are not here but i will read again the uh, title so uh, to is domain driven design as a choice for software development in projects with complicated business processes i don't know if they entered meanwhile or we can go to the next one the next no they are not here we can go to here. the okay. next one Maybe if they come until the end, the other will wait. So we go to the next one, titled uh, Overview of some legal aspects of technologies based on artificial intelligence. Mrs. Roxana Pohun, if uh, she's connected. I, I cannot see if she's here. Maybe she isn't. And the, the next paper after this one is titled AI uh, assisted uh, diagnostics in health management. We have the authors of this one. Uh, I was told that Irina will present the paper. Uh, perhaps we could but, wait. Uh, I, do, the, I don't uh, see her connected. Uh, I'm sure that she will connect it at some point. So maybe we can uh, skip to the next paper. Uh, and uh, Irina can present. Maybe she will again. connect until the end. I don't know. Yes. So the last paper uh, is the relationship between big data driven technologies and performance management strategies applied to companies in the hospitality, tourism and travel industry. Elena Gurgu, Raluca Zorzoliu, Luminița Pistol, Ioana Andreea Gurgu, Camelia Ungureanu, Ica Nae. But I don't see any of them connected here. So I don't know. Maybe uh, they will connect later. I don't know. So from uh, those of you that are still uh, connected, uh, is anyone having to present uh, something? I'm asking because I'm not sure if we uh, present, if all of you presented or not. If you want to speak, please turn on your microphone so we can hear you. If uh, nobody has any more presentations, I think we, we will stop uh, here our session. So any any observations? Some, uh, somebody, any any of you wants to uh, tell anything in the end? If uh, someone uh, has to complete, yes, please. 
Yes, I just uh, want to thank you everyone for a really interesting presentation and uh, some points of view I didn't realize earlier, maybe I realize now more, more clear, uh, especially in the field of application. Our colleague spoke about that in the application of uh, blockchain in the in the field of Internet of Things and maybe that in the future I will write a paper about that how can that replace in some aspect our video uh, recording of what's happening in the house so maybe through the blockchain technology all the sensors data can be collected mm -hmm. so thank you very much uh, for for the useful knowledge I collect today thank you we also thank you all of you in the name of uh, Spiru Haret University. For sure, uh, more research is to be done in uh, the field of blockchain, but also in other related uh, domains. So uh, at the moment, we don't have any other papers to be um, presented. Thank you again. It was a, a real nice uh, uh, to see you all and to uh, hear all your interesting presentations. So uh, we hope uh, everything was fine for all of you. And um, thank you. Thank you all.